this is uh, Mulatu as that came in Tradition, my new CD called Mulatu Stepped Ahead on Stroud Records. Uh, I won this uh, grant at Harvard University um, for about a year and a half, um, and Ida Orchestra was stationed in Boston. Some of them are uh, really great teachers, great musicians. In fact, I should say everybody in that group was really very excellent and great musicians. Some teach at the uh, Berkeley, some of them were teaching at the New England Conservatory, and even Rush was also went to Harvard. So our communication uh, of developing this music was so beautiful, was so really great. Before, I used to do the Ethio Jazz with a smaller group, but I always dreamt to write Ethio Jazz music with a large and a big band so the harmony can be expanded and uh, can be able to use beautiful counterpoints because of the band, uh, you know, because it's a big band. So I had these dreams always in my mind and uh, about this new uh, music, new pieces. So um, it's been arranged and there was also a great guy called Joe in the band, which really loves Ethio Jazz, which really loves my work so much. And uh, we collaborated in some works, uh, but the theme being always my music, my Ethio Jazz music. And uh, so on these new albums, everything, most of the arrangements and the passes to Joe and to just polish it up a little bit. I think that piece uh, took the Ethio jazz music one step. Because I, I really had a beautiful dream of uh, using our different modes in the same melodies, in the same uh, structures of your musical arrangements which happened on the Ethiopian blues. And that would be a really beautiful experiment. Because like, you know, I mean, the formation was like a blues formation. But on that uh, blues formation, I was going to Tenzita, I was going to Ambassador, to Achikoye, which makes it so interesting, even for the younger Ethiopian musicians. Instead of like thinking one mode to write on, one mode to play on, this will give them uh, a larger and a beautiful uh, understanding of the new Ethiopian jazz music. Um, on the Green Africa, um, we use traditional musical instruments, we call the Krar, and um, the rhythm is uh, what we call the Chichika, which is so interesting, Chichika. And um, also the um, the harmonic structures, the horn voicings, was so beautiful. So that's uh, been done in a different ways to this Ethiopian voice. Usually, uh, we have uh, in Africa with problems with famine. Uh, we have problems like uh, people being going hungry, and uh, I call this Green Africa because. Um, I wanted all African people to really work so hard to make the, the, the contract great. This is a very interesting story uh, about the, the Darashis in particular, because um, these people, all these tribes are so interesting to me because they are in the middle of a five-tone country. But these people, they managed to cut different size of bamboos and play a diminished scale. So, you know how diminished scale is so important for the development of jazz music. And we've learned when we studied actually, 
how Charlie Parker created the modern jazz using through the English skills and the great composers like Debussy and Bach and um, all the people used the English skill to compose their um, music. So was really always uh, you know bothered me and always uh, thinking about who were the first? Was it the Rashi people or these people? So these tribes, um, I call them scientists in sound. So what I did was actually, um, I used the, the diminished skills just to show to the world. Ethiopia also has contributed to a development of jazz music in this world. They went to the Nice. Um, you know, we had a concert in Nice, which is uh, really a place I really loved, I really um, enjoyed the atmosphere, uh, the people, uh, the sceneries, everything was so nice and beautiful. And um, always this kind of music, like it used to, I used to just hum this little melody, not the whole, everything, but I used to hum it once in a while. So while I was in Nice, it really came back to my uh, attention back again. So we were traveling from Nice to Milan, which is really a beautiful scenery, beautiful roads. So um, I said, okay, we had a tape in the car. I said, okay, bring the tape. Well, look, I'm, I want to put on something, you know? So I hummed, I hummed on it, we put it together, the sound has hummed the whole tunes, uh, and then uh, when we rested some place, um, I started writing it down. I started out in the sound check in Montpellier, and I think, and uh, we just, I just remember, I remember Malati, we were all sort of wandered off to try and sort of find dress rooms or something like that, and Malati sort of hung around behind and he was on, on the trying out his ideas, you know, and he's very, very sort of, you know, he doesn't like to sort of, uh, he, he keeps it in his own little world, he kind of turned the keyboard right down, he was just sort of trying, feeling his way around, feeling his way around these, these, these new grooves, and, uh, and he came up with this, this, I remember him coming up with this groove, and he was like, hey daddy, you know, what do you think of this? Oh, yeah, great, great, that sounds cool. And then I think just as the day went on, it kind of, you know, he was thinking about, you could tell he was sort of had his mind was stuck on this, this groove, this, this idea, this bass line. And then, then all of a sudden he could hear that he was sort of thinking about these structures and what was coming. And eventually the, we did we did our gig and then the next day we, we um, got got in the car for another mammoth drive to our next venue and that was in Nice. And uh, so what happened in the car was uh, I said to my lady, well look, would you like me to score this these ideas down for you? And uh, he was like, oh, that'd be great, you know, so I got out the old laptop and started just scoring down the bass line and then we started, from there together we kind of just started to try and put a few chords in there and then try and maybe a little, few little arrangement ideas of what instruments would do what and the same sort of counter melodies that were going on. The, the music itself, like, it, it's moves, you know, it, it, it works. Beautiful atmosphere. And I was trying to reflect our movement, our trip from uh, Nice to Milan. This is the genius of Malati. He's not someone who says, well, look, this groove will do, here we go. He's like, oh, I like this groove, but how can we make it a bit different? How can we mess it up a bit? How can we make it a bit challenging? Not just for the musicians, but also for, for, the, for the listener as well. And this particular one was this trying to get this, this offbeat syncopation groove where you instantly want to feel, feel this groove on beat. You know, when you see it on paper, you think, Ah, uh, shouldn't this be on B? But no, and it shifts it slightly. And it's these little subtleties, these little details, which I really think makes Malati's music uh, distinct. Malati's mood is really expresses how if you jazz is. How if you jazz, in my opinion, uh, how I want it to move in the future also. Uh, so I recorded it with a, a feeling of uh, like a jazz fusion. That's what, uh, how I felt it when I was recording it in, uh, in, uh, in Washington. 
a few years back. Um, well, now, uh, I really uh, wanted to also have, uh, this time, the atmosphere of the uh, African styles, West Africa, uh, East Africa, and uh, South Africa. So, now, uh, Ethiopia jazz, or the mulatto sword, from a really jazz fusion, it went back to, to the roots of Africa. Sure, you want you know, you sure yeah, it's okay for me to take it. Says, yes, but I want it back, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, of course, okay. Motherland is actually is a music we worked out together the melody with a man called Germay Hadago. He's a great Ethiopian music composer, he have composed quite a lot. And uh, one day we just sit down. And uh, let's say, let's work out something, work out something. So we work on this melody. So it came out so beautiful. And I did the arrangements. And Baron played it beautifully. He felt it so nice. So that's the piece called The Motherland. And so he gave me the score, which the melody was there. And it was very, very clear. And around it, there was all these other ideas. It was like watching, you know, it was like uh, looking at Malati's brain on a piece of paper, um, which is really fascinating, the way that, and also the way that he, you know, the way that he voices certain things, and, you know, you can see his vibes coming in, a bit working for horns or something like that. You know, it's a beautiful track, you know, it really is, and it's got this lovely pace to it, it's not too fast, not too slow, but it's, just, it's kind of like this sort of heart, heartbeat going on. And then this wonderful, wonderful melody that sort of moves around, around the different changes. So I used the instrument called the Bagana. I used the washing. Uh, I used the Krar. And those instruments really uh, blend beautifully. But my, the future plan of the Ethio Jazz is uh, to upgrade all Ethiopian cultural medical instruments. So, to be able to play 12-tone music. You know, we talked a lot before we went in the studio, me and Malati, we talked a lot about, you know, who, who, who we wanted playing and what, or, you know, what kind of instrumentation he was going to use on certain tracks. And then, interestingly, when we got in the studio, that completely changed for some of, some of the tracks, which was great, you know, because it was much more about the moment. It was much more about saying, well, look, we've got this guy here at the moment. Let's see if we can chuck him on this track and see what he does for this. And often it really helps, you know, to do that. So that was nice, you know, it's kind of like even right up to the last minute, we weren't 100% sure about how each tune was going to go, um, which I think is a great way to work, really. It's a nice way to work. It's much more impulsive and you know, relies on musicianship. <laughs> 